This year has seen the meteoric rise of the young band Suede. Opening shot followed them from lead singer Brett Anderson's hometown Haywards Heath to a concert in Brighton and eventually to Los Angeles for a glimpse at their first American tour. Back home, a 15-year-old fan, Molly Walker, helped us find out why Suede have been hailed as one of the most exciting new bands in Britain. I've been to three concerts and I love, I love the whole atmosphere, There's, everything's really good and I think Matt said once you feel with Suede like you're part of a community, you know, everyone's there and then you feel really this is your place for the while, you know, this is brilliant, this is what teenage life is all about really. is so important to me because what they say is just so me in a way I just think yes that's how I've been feeling you know and someone has been through what I've been through The station's probably the most interesting thing about MT3. It's just the way out of the place, I suppose, really. My best friend at school, we were both punks together, yeah, so we were in the punk gang. And then one day I was walking to school with him and he told me he decided to become a headbanger. <laughs> and, like, you know, my best friend, it was, we were the only two people that ended up punk in the school, and he decided he was going to be a, become a headbanger, and he sold, it, and sold me all his punk records and bought, bought a load of Deep Purple records and a denim jacket and some patchouli oil. And, load of, and bought a load of studs for his denim jacket from the market and became this headbanger and completely kind of disowned anything to do with punk. I was into crass at the time. I used to have a red skiing jacket. So I, didn't, I didn't dress like a member of crass. I had a red skiing jacket which I sewed a Nagasaki nightmare patch onto, which is the name of a crass song. Um, um, I don't know really what I look like. I probably look like a twit. Sort of remnant from the late 1970s with a, with a home-done haircut, which most people wear at that time. I get to see Suede and have a weekend, well, a, a weekend that starts today in Brighton. A long weekend. On the so, Before we go off to Paul and Newport. When I speak to the fans, I do, I do feel as though they understand what I'm talking about. Occasionally, you'll meet one who um, you really think knows what you're talking about, down to the last detail. Because, of course, people never can quite delve inside your mind and misread things, but occasionally I meet one of them and they'll just... They'll be looking in their eye, which says that they completely understand what you're talking about. Yeah, just write like a little letter or something. 
Okay. Why don't you come back, come back afterwards? Yeah, where would you be? We'll be in the thing, but they, 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 they'll let you in, they'll stay. Thanks. 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 them as being very important um, in the music business, you know, a very important part of the music business today, um, because there was such a vast gap in, in indie music particularly, and I think Suede came along at the right time. I saw Suede first at the beginning of 1992, and I thought they were exceptional. They weren't headlining or anything, they were just on a bill with other bands, and they stood out, you know, like, like the proverbial sort of thing. When I decided um, to put Suede on the cover of Melody Maker and called them the best new band in Britain, I felt very strongly that they would be able to carry it off. I would not have taken that risk, because it could have destroyed a group to do that to them because all of a sudden you make them victims everybody's out after them trying to disprove what you've said I felt very strongly that they were the best new band in Britain I still think that they are the reason Sway became so successful so rapidly was because the critics loved them because they were no different exactly the same as everything the critics grew up with. They hark back to an era of rock and roll that the critics understand, kind of 1973 down the front of the Hammersmith Odeon watching David Bowie perform all his latest hits. And the critics went with that because everybody wants to hear the music they first grew up with, so they foisted it upon the rest of us. I don't agree when critics say that they're just, you know, 70s carbon copies or whatever, because I think if they were, people would see through that and just think their music's too 70s orientated, we're not interested. But I don't think people say that, because for us, the teenagers who are Suede's target audience, we haven't lived through the 70s as teenagers, so we don't know what the music's like. First time I met Brett, he was, was at a party somewhere in, in Hayward's Heath. And the next time I saw him was when we were both at the same college. And he was, uh, he was playing Beatles songs for some reason on an electric guitar in, the, in one of the rooms. And, and the f I think the first thing that I actually said to him was, um, do you want to be in a band? Because I was in an, an incredibly dodgy sub-goth band at the time. <laughs> 